Hey, what's up, everybody? One peg here. So uh, we have patch notes um, in this case from SDF. Uh, as I said, at once they were up, I would let you guys know what was going on. They were dropped at 2.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's now 3.15 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, they said they were taking the game down at 2.45, which about a half an hour ago. They said 40 minutes to complete the, uh, the, the matches. So in about 10 minutes, the servers will be down three hours or so. Anyway, uh, we should expect to see the servers come back, I guess, sometime around 5.30, 6.00. 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, in which case, obviously, I'll get in there and, and we'll check out the differences. Anyway, there was some changes made, the most notable of which for the fixes section of this was a fix where gold chests were not locked. Apparently, the uh, unlocked gold chest not needing a key and that kind of thing was actually not supposed to be a thing. So once again, y'all will have to start bringing lockpicks back into raid with you. Uh, if I were you, you might want to check and see what the lockpick price is. Maybe you can get some on a discount before everything goes to hell. There is also the addition of a cloth simulation being uh, toggleable as on or off. The maximum move speed cap has been changed from 350 to 330, which means that uh, people, I guess, won't be able to run away as easily and also will be able to get caught a little bit quicker. The XP re required to level up a character has been significantly reduced. The levels of existing characters will be adjusted accordingly. So anyone that has done their leveling, it will be leveled up. So you'll have all of the levels that you're supposed to have gotten at this point in time as if the the XP system had always been whatever the new XP system is supposed to be. They haven't said exactly what that means, but my guess is somewhere around like half maybe for the uh, the level differences. It might be about half the XP, but again, once it goes live, we'll get in there and we'll check it out. Barbarians, Barbarians Iron Will no longer ignores knockback. Rogue's rupture cooldown changed from 18 to 24 seconds, which is interesting. Divine protection physical damage reduction changed from 50 to 30%. Now, again, this this is the introduction of the multi-class system. And this change, because of multi-class, honestly, makes a lot of sense. Uh, the 50% the divine protection was going to be extremely overpowered, probably still will be, on just about every melee-centric build where people would want to be tanky for that five to seven seconds, depending on whatever your will is. Cleric Smite no longer scales. Another massive, massive, massive change due to the multi-class system coming into play. Uh, not having Cleric Smite go into or along with um, magic damage bonuses or any of the like or will scaling having that scaling turned off is a significant change in how smite works and kind of drops it from being at the top of the tier although if you're me you're still going to look at something like smite or boc as being the go-to if you're playing any type of like bonk or or rapid damage attack skill or ability again i don't think something like smite is taken off the table in this case uh, that's still going to be a significant amount of additional damage. That additional damage being magic uh, will end up being uh, very, very good regardless. And I still say something like a survival bow with smite using multi-shot is going to dole out an absolute ton of damage and would still be worth using. Reduce hit slow penalty for Rondel Dagger, Stiletto Dagger, and Chris Dagger. So this slow penalty being reduced is is kind of big too, because this means that it's a lot less likely, although still still going to happen, that rogues would be able to continue to stab people while they chase them, because the slow wouldn't be applied as badly on hit like it would be for other weapons. Chris Dagger's weapon damage has been reduced. Now again, I think that this is a necessary change. They don't say by how much, but the idea of uh, Bloodstained Blade on a war Warlock with a Chris Dagger and Shadow Touch is still extremely powerful, um, especially again with multi-class being what it is. There's definitely some he something here with a Chris Dagger stacking with like Bloodstained Blade and Ignite using uh, Smite even and doing an absurd amount of damage still uh, if you're a Warlock. Now all classes can play an instrument. So one of the big questions, obviously, was what was going to happen with instruments, considering that there is no weapon mastery for instruments. In this case, if you want to be able to play an instrument, now everyone can. This likely also means that the barbarian being able to throw drums is now back on the table, and the likelihood that you'll be able to throw a drum against a door if you're using crush and breaking doors open is also pretty high. Again, have to get in there and test it, but if this is getting brought back, it's likely that's getting brought back too. 
Weapon damage of each rarity for all instruments has been adjusted. So this is interesting. We'll have to see exactly what that means. The movement speed of all robes has been changed to minus 10. So this is actually a good change too. Now that it's standardized, there's no more guesswork. I, I kind of like this. The attributes of some crafted items have been changed. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go with that, but we'll find out. The gear scores of some crafted items have been changed. The ruby silver leather cap can now be worn by all classes. That's also an interesting modification because leather caps have a vigor stat as their base stat so this might be pretty good ruby silver and gold ore spawns have been slightly increased so one of the big criticisms that i had in a prior video was that with all of the people that are kind of stuck on this quest in particular being the first line item for the armor smith having to get six ruby silver and six gold it was like if you didn't want to risk a ton of gear or you didn't have trios buddies you ended up having to go in and just like spam normals and try to get down to inferno and then it was either the northwest corner for like a couple of nodes or the southwest corner of inferno into the spider room to get two ruby silver and two gold ore and because of the rng of it all in normals you're only getting either two two or three node hits pieces of ore off of those nodes which at best you were getting four or at worst you were getting four and at best you were getting six which meant that you had to get perfect pulls on two nodes in a row in order to not have to do it a second time so you had to go back down there twice just about every time you had to go back down there twice uh because they're increasing the spawn rate maybe we'll find these on like normal crypts now and we'll be able to like pull them out of some of the other places where or used to spawn um that would end up being like really really nice to not have to force people to go to inferno and then fight over those singular ore spawns when the when the loop to get to those things takes a half hour you know what i'm saying like it was just like a little bit too much anyway the entry limit for high roller and trade is level 20 so now instead of being level 15 to be able to trade you have to be level 20 now this kind of makes sense if they're going to make the leveling faster it's still going to take roughly the same amount of time i would imagine to be able to gain access to trade the entry limit for high roller not being level one anymore and now having to be level 20 in order to do it is a little bit awkward the the, the change here having to like spam normals until you're level 20 i don't know if i necessarily agree with that uh idea but it, it, whatever it is what it is um i i figure like if they don't change this it probably would start to hurt like next season i think would be the place that we'd really feel that as a pain point most people i think at this point have like a level 20 character or two or three in order to be able to uh kind of circumvent this whole thing it just kind of stinks that you'd be running normals in like gray to white gear pulling greens and blues and stuff out of those runs through the inferno rounds and then kind of not be able to use any of the gear that you're amassing that entire time until you get out and and get level 20 and then you end up having like this leftover stuff that you can then use i don't know it's just weird now when the square gives out supply items if you unlock a higher grade item among junk poor and common the lower grade item will not be given out so white is max for the squire um this is good it kind of like gets rid of the all the clutter in their inventory and replaces it with a better quality item which i think people would just do anyway so it, it kind of uh, gets rid of something that looked redundant and was unnecessary i i'm, I'm cool with that you can now multi-select random attribute filters in the marketplace so this was a request that i had made during a dev interview uh, a few weeks ago when we did the uh the interview prior to the wipe asking them if there was the ability to be able to multiple select the things that we're trying to filter out because if you wanted an item that had plus magic damage and run speed you had to search for one of the two and then kind of just page through a whole ton of stuff until you found the desired item this cuts down on an awful lot of time spent on the marketplace it has a huge quality of life feature this is something that we absolutely needed really really good that they were able to do this i'm i'm very 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 pleased the multi-class system has been added that was the big thing Okay, High Adventurers, the multi-class system has been added. The level up table has been adjusted to make it a little easier to reach the master class level and to earn the early learning tokens. All character levels have been automatically adjusted to the new higher levels and any additional learning reward tokens have been automatically credited to the character. There you go. We've also limited the maximum number of learning tokens per character to 13, meaning no additional learning tokens are earned after level 270. The Fortune Teller's reset timer for her Mind Wipe service has also been increased and is available to reroll your learning tokens once every Tuesday and Friday. So instead of there being a 24 hour reset which is what we saw at midnight gmt now it is every tuesday and every friday 
I'm going to add something to this and ask if there's a way that they could potentially allow us to like bank one. So let's say we miss uh, a roll, a re-roll opportunity on Tuesday and we're only really able to catch it like say for Friday. Could we possibly get the credit for the re-roll on Tuesday and give us like one in the bank for uh, for our characters? That would kind of be nice. Um, although maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I feel like for the people that aren't able to play as much, it would be nice for them to be able to kind of keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, for the people that are able to hit that reroll every single time on the nose. Um, instead of doing that, maybe they could give like a like a single use bank for uh, other people for when they're kind of playing uh, passively or they're not as as active as the rest of us. They could get in there and, and be able to uh, to do the reroll on a on a regular basis that would allow them the same level of RNG possibility statistically as everyone else. As we've noted multiple times, we're looking at this multi-class test as a true experiment for the season. Please note that there's a very good chance that the multi-class system will be sub will substantially evolve for the next season or may even be removed based on the response from the community. Finally, barring any surprises, the current season, including the preseason prior to the next wipe, is scheduled to end in early June. Thank you. Well, guys, there you have it. It looks pretty interesting on the surface. Uh, I have I have two main schools of thought that kind of like tear me in different directions here. One is I'm very, very interested to see all of the crazy builds that people come up with. I think that there is some really, really cool, really fun and funny stuff that people would be able to build using these systems that are being put in place. Secondarily, though, I also see the complaint, the, the point of the complaints about losing class identity and, and all of the other reasonings behind this that make it so uh, these, these massive OP builds may not necessarily be something that the community wants. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of of both of both thought places here. Uh, in, in my mind, I think it'll make for some really, really cool content for both us as content creators and for gamers in general to be able to play around with all of these different builds and just see what they're capable of generating if they don't get something that's perfect every single time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming and checking out the video. If you wouldn't mind subbing the channel here or maybe even hitting the bell, that would be amazing. Uh, I will be live at twitch.tv slash one peg uh, probably tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, if you wouldn't mind, you know, maybe coming by and saying hi sometime, that would be that would be really cool. Um, otherwise, you can always check me out at Twitter at twitter.com slash one peg MG. Okay, thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.